Hello everyone and welcome to lesson number four of my deep learning course. In this video we will start to see how to debug a neural network. So this is going to be a topic also for people who are not new in machine learning. So without further wait, let's get started. Whether you want to implement AI into your business or you just need consultancy from a machine learning expert, I'm the right person for you. From acquiring data till deployment, my multiple years experience will provide you full support which will help you to boost your business. To find out more, check the link in the video description. Welcome back everyone. So here we are again in the Jupyter Lab interface and as always we will proceed the same procedure. So first go to my website, uh, lesson 4, we scroll down and we take, as always, the link, copy this command, go back to JupyterLab, open up the terminal, then we paste this command, enter, the download is complete, and now we unzip the zip file. So unzip lesson4.zip and press enter. Give it a little bit of time to refresh and here it is lesson4.ipython notebook so we double click on it and we can start the lesson for today so this lesson is going to be about how to debug a neural network it's going to be divided in two parts um, so in this tutorial we will see how to debug a simple for now neural network and how to identify its limitations as always, here you can see the video for this lesson. So I can execute it. This case is lesson two again. It's gonna change uh, to lesson four as soon as I upload the video. Don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell. So as always, let's start with a question. Why deep learning is considered a black box? What do I mean by black box? Something that we don't really understand how it works but given some input we get some output but we don't really understand how we make some decisions it became quite common since the last couple of years to hear people referring to modern machine learning systems as black boxes especially deep learning deep learning is a complicated approach used to solve very complicated tasks and it is often not well understood bringing people to treat it as a plug-and-play technology in fact we can achieve quite good results with minimal effort by following a few simple rules. Maybe you guys have already seen some other YouTube videos in which some people are trying to solve some task and they maybe just take a pre-trained network or they just give you a default network and just tweak some parameters and produce some pretty good results. But in real world, when you're trying to solve something which is not yet solved, then things change. When we want to improve the last 2 to 5% of our neural network's performance, then it becomes very challenging. If there is anybody following here this video and is also maybe doing some Kaggle challenges, he might know what I'm talking about. Understanding the limitation of a neural network at this point is fundamental to increase the score, of course. Now we will see one procedure to debug a neural network. There are many ways, but some are quite complicated and require more knowledge. We will discuss them later in the course. I don't want to overload you guys with too many informations. Now, let's take the network from lesson 3 and train it using the data I provided as an exercise. As always, we want to make sure that we are using the TensorFlow 21 virtual environment, so we execute this code. If you guys get any error, you can always change it here, the virtual environment from this button up here and select TensorFlow 2. Okay, so the code that I'm going to show you now is the same code I used in lesson three with just a few changes. First, I fixed a typo error in the call function. Uh, I was applying sigmoid also on the final layer. Um, the Jupyter notebook for you guys will not uh, have any changes because I replace it after the after I recorded the video. So actually the error was just here that I 
given a minus equal uh, the number of the hidden layers instead it's just minor uh, number of the hidden layers uh, so you might get some minor changes into the behavior respect to the video that I made but the concepts are still the same second in the constructor now we give the possibility to choose the value in which we initialize the weights so as you can see now I have this initialize width that give me the possibility of changing the, the value in which I initialize the variable. Third, I added the variable debug in the call function so that we can see the output of the network at each layer. So if we scroll here, we can see debug equal false. Um, by change, changing this variable, then we see at each layer what's happening. For the rest, is the same code as lesson three. So we execute this code. Okay, now we go to the loss function and it's the same, so we execute also this code and the training function also remains the same. Now here I have created another function called training loop. It's nothing else than a function that accepts the neural network, inputs, number of steps and learning rate and it's just going to train the, the network for us just to have a cleaner way to, to run the training loop. Okay, now let's train the network with the data provided for the bonus question of lesson three. So as you can see, we get the input values with three positive values and three negative values. The network is still gonna have four layers. This time we're gonna train it for 500 steps because I wanna show you guys what's happening. Then again, learning rate, and then just create an instance of the network and train it. So we execute the code. As you can see, now it's gonna take a little while. First thing that we can notice, um, I don't know if you guys have seen other uh, videos regarding how to train a network. Usually we always get the loss, the information for the loss and for the accuracy or whatever evaluation metric we have. In this case, I also printed also in lesson three, weights and biases. And this is already something very important. When you access this information, you can see what's happening inside. So this is already some extra um, information that we need to, to check every time. Another thing to see is that this time the loss starts very high. So 1.6 instead of what was happening in lesson three. So when we scroll all the way down, you can see the loss reduces, but it's kind of plateauing. It's really not reducing much. What's happening between the output and the, the labels now? You can see that the first three elements are positive, about 0, 0 0.76, 0 0.78, and 77. And the other three are still positive. Well, instead, they should have been negative. So the loss reduces it needs really way more time and still remains quite high. But as you can see also the output, the network is not able with 500 steps to, to get to negative values. Why? So to answer this question, we need to write a new function and see what happens at each step this time. So now I've created a new function called one forward pass. If you guys don't know what a forward pass is, it's just basically, uh, the data that flows from the beginning, so from the input till the output. That's the old sequence until the, the final layer and the output, that, that's a forward pass. So this function take two arguments. One is, again, the neural network, and we will use the, the one that we just trained, and the inputs. So when we execute this code, again, I use the same neural network and the same inputs like before. We can see that the inputs are the one provided, then we see the output of layer zero, so the first layer, and it's just like basically multiplicating by two because the weights, as you can see, by two, and the bias is basically zero. Then we apply sigmoid, the first sigmoid after the first layer. And as you can see, it's very close to one for the, for the first three inputs and zero for the other three. Because if you guys remember, sigmoid forces 
a range between 0 to 1. And it won't exceed those two uh, limits. So in the first three elements, we get positive value very close to 1. For the other three, it's just 0. So whatever number we multiplicate by 0 is still going to remain 0. In fact, if we go to layer 1, we can see that we get this time negative values for the other three just because of the bias. So if you look at the bias, we see a minus 0 0.3434. So thanks to the bias, we can get to some negative value, else the network wouldn't be able. Then we can see the sigmoid 1, so the sigmoid applied after the second layer. And again, it's forcing in the range 0 to 1. This time the output looks a bit better, but still, again, all positive. Then comes the layer 2, and again, sigmoid, and then the final layer. So, as you guys can see, the sigmoid function is forcing the output of each layer to be positive. And this causes issue when we want to have negative values, of course, because the only way that we can have negative values is by having a strong bias to, to go below zero. Using this information, let's see how to create a neural network that can process some negative values without even training. Because as, as we saw before, by giving negative values, then we get errors, we get problems. So I created a new instance of the neural network class. This time we're going to use two layers instead of four because we saw that it's not helping having more layers. It's just adding complexity and the sigmoid is always going to shrink the value of, of the output between zero and one. And this time we will initialize the weights with minus one. So let's see what happens. Remember that this network has not been trained. So it's just fresh from scratch just by changing the way we initialize the weights. So as you can see, the input contains only negative values this time. As you can see, I changed before was the first three positive and the other three negative. So at the output of layer zero, we get, of course, only positive values because we multiply by minus one. Then we apply sigmoid and we can see the values again between zero and one. And then to the layer one, which actually is going to be the final layer at this point, since we have only two layers. If we compare the output of the network and the labels without even training, we are very, very close to the proper output. As you can see, only the third value is a little bit far, but for the rest, we are quite there. So as you guys can see, just by changing the way we initialize the weights, everything changed. Of course, the inputs were, were different this time, but we were able to process negative values also this time. And this is very important so that by understanding what's happening inside the network, we can see where are the pitfalls of that network. And we can also save time because by changing the way we initialize the weights, if we initialize it in a proper manner, then we help the network to learn faster. So at this point, as you can see, we're very, very close. We, we almost don't need to train at this point. So also for you guys, it's going to be way easier. Instead, previously, if you were trying to have given only negative value, wouldn't need very, very long time the network to learn. And it has to be strongly affected the bias. In this case, it's more fluid, it's more simple, the network. In the next video, we will see how to analyze the gradients of our neural network while it's training. And we will also see how to solve the problem with this data partially positive and partially negative with a neural network. So that's it for this video. If you guys like my content, you can support me on Patreon, where you can speak directly with me. And also I can give you advice on how to get started into this career. Another way to support this channel is to use my affiliate link that I give in the video description for your purchases at no cost for you. Finally, another way to support me is to subscribe and share this video on social media. So I thank you for now and I hope to see you in my next video.